Hey, everybody. Welcome back to the Gridiron Gals podcast. I'm Rita, the NFL chick. And hey, everybody. It's Chelsea, a.k.a. Chelsea's right. We are at the divisional round weekend. Uh, we got to talk about the Super Wild Card weekend. Um, and we'll get to that. But before we do, we know that there's been some potential moving parts in the head coaching world in the NFL. Bill Belichick and the Atlanta Falcons. It hasn't happened yet as we do this podcast, but he has had his second interview, Chels. And I'm sorry, this feels weird. I'm just going to say it out front. This feels very weird. It feels culturally light years different from what he did in New England, right? Um, New England, you know, was to me a very like robotic uh, organization. I don't know. I could be wrong here, but y'all ain't look like y'all was having too much fun up there. And no, look, they, uh-huh. you can, you know, I mean, I get it. Y'all was winning Super Bowls. You said, fuck fun. We don't need to be having no good time. <laughs> we around here winning Super Bowls. I get it. But the Falcons culture is one that is very entrenched into the people that live there, right? Like they have a DJ there, sometimes Big Tigger hosts the games um ludicrous did a halftime show there and he came out of the sky in the halftime show so bill belichick going to atlanta i know this has nothing to do with actual coaching i know it just feels very very weird that there is mutual interest between bill belichick arthur blank being in the city of atlanta Uh, what she's trying to say is she thinks that Atlanta is too black for Bill Belichick. That's what, that's what's happening here. I mean, we should just say the thing at this point, we should say the thing. Um, And that is the way, that is the way it feels. Um, It, uh, I don't think that he will infuse the team with any kind of energy. He has never needed to do that. He is a very flat person. Um, He's very, like you said, he's very robotic. He's very routine. Um, you not Gary see him out there rapping with Ludacris, um, and all that kind of <laughs> and you know, I mean, he knows who Ludacris is even. I, he probably does just because he seems like he's somebody that will find out everything. Like he's going, I feel like he would find out everything. Like let me find okay. out another person that performed here, Ludacris. Why does he spell his name like that? Okay, let me look at my. <laughs> I feel like he would be one of those people. Like my dad. Like my dad knows people because he just he old, but he just nosy, and he'll just Google somebody. Like you know, but. I don't know. It just it does it does feel strange, but also we have attached Bill Jeff Belichick to New England for so long that even that feels weird. Same thing it felt way it felt for me about Tom Brady. Like I could not get over Tom Brady and Tampa. <laughs> what that don't make no sense. So you think that Bill Belichick gonna go to one of the day parties? If I <laughs> see a picture of him in a restaurant with the flower background, personally won't. Cam Newton to invite him to his cigar bar. Oh my God, that would be perfect. We need fellowship to have a welcome. We need to be at fellowship. He needs to be at fellowship. Cam, I know you're not listening, but if you were to be listening, invite Bill Belichick to fellowship, and I want yes. to see him. I want you to get him a, a, a fedora and put him about three playing cards in the top, and then a feather on the other side. Please do it for the people. Please do. Oh my God! I need this to happen. Now I need this to happen. I need. I need this to happen. Look, Arthur Blake said he's tired of um, all the fun that y'all having at these games. They ain't winning none. So we about to go to some boring football, but it's going to come up with some results. So you know, Bill Belichick, not you know, he lived in an area that it's cold up there. Ain't probably a whole whole lot going on. And if he gets this job in Atlanta, it's too much going on. I I need, I need somebody to see Bill Belichick outside. Okay. I need Bill Bill Belichick. I can't even get his name right because I'm now just so like, I need this to have, I'm so excited that this could potentially happen. I need Bill Belichick to be outside if he's in Atlanta. Gotta be outside. I want to see it. I want to see it. I want to see him be outside. Uh, So uh, we'll see how that goes. But we know that Bill Belichick's predecessor was Gerard Mayo. um, And he is the new head coach. He had his press conference 
this week and uh, a whole lot of, you know, funny things going on. My favorite thing that Mayo said, though, Charles, was, you know, I do see color. Because if I, if, I, if I didn't see color, then that means I, I don't see racism. And I absolutely do. Now, I did not read the comments when that came out on Twitter uh, because we know that uh, there's it's very sensitive up there. A lot of people act like that race and racism is no longer a thing. And then they be the main ones projecting and then reminding you that race and racism is a thing. So I chose to stay away from those comments. But uh, yeah, I, I love that he said that because too many times this year, we've seen too many people talk about, I don't see color. You a don't see color, goddamn lie. Just say you got a white wife. Are you talking about Hubert Davis? Yes, I am. Okay. And not just Hubert Davis, Michigan, yo. Don't don't remember his name. Oh, yeah, um, yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. Crying baby. Little, little, little bit crying little, little baby. Cry baby. Lil Cry Baby, Big Baby, Big Baby was the one, was and, the other one asked, uh, and, and his the question that they asked him wasn't even really about race, but he had to tell us he had a white ass wife, had to tell us. So I don't see color. Okay, well, good for you, Big Baby, but uh, I do, and I'm glad that uh, Gerard Mayo does too because uh, it is very, very real still in the year 2024. Yeah, and it, and it is something, you know, and people like to say, you know, why do people um, bring up race and why your black people always got a big old break? We don't bring up race. We are two feet in it from the moment we open up our eyes. How about so, it? And that is to no fault of our own. Like, we always have to think about our race. We always have to think about how we are being perceived, how what what we can say and how it impacts, how it floats. Does it resonate? You know, are people thinking that I'm saying this because I'm black or do they think that I'm saying this because I know what I'm talking about? You know, so it's always something. And we always are charged with making other people feel better about listening to us and being around us. How so about like, it? it's about race for us. It is always. And I'm, I'm happy about that. And I'm happy that he is that he just went ahead and get go ahead and rip the bandaid off because we know how they can roll up there. Um, we we we. Boston people, I mean, Boston, New England folks, they like they like to act like it, but huh, we have seen enough. Yeah. We have seen enough. And, heard enough. and we know how y'all can roll up there. And it's already coming. People are already coming, calling him a woke coach. And I was like, so what is woke? Now? First of all, I'm so mad that they stole our word from her. That is a part of the black like community. This one is being black. sleep being better than being woke. I don't understand that. It's like they just took it and bastardized it and, and, and they're not even using it in the right way. You're not even using it in the right way. You know, you know, it is from our community. It is a word like, hey, stay woke, stay aware, keep your head on the swivel. And they don't turn it down. Anything black or anything, you know, PC, oh, it's a woke, oh, they got a woke coach. Well, I, I think they ain't seen nothing yet because I think that he's going to be very like, hey, I'm going to say what it is. And I think that he's going to have the support of Bob Kraft because now Bob Kraft isn't, <laughs> he's trying to get to the cookout. Hey, that's it. Bob Kraft, just, he's just trying to get to the cookout, honey. He, look, he got multiple Super Bowls. He's done fantastic at this point. So now he's in a position where he can kind of just do whatever he wants to do. And no um, I, I'm not saying that, like, I don't think uh, Mayo is not a good coach because I yeah. think that he will be fine. Um, but ultimately, you know, you can kind of be flexible about these types of things when you have multiple championships, you know, right. behind you, because you can say, trust me, then you trust me the last time. And how did that work? Uh, but it's an end of end of an era in New England. No more Brady, no more Belichick. Uh, so I can go back to not caring about the Patriots and not feeling any type of way about them anymore. So unless, you know, they find a good quarterback and then they get back into being really, really good again. Now, it's they will. I think they will. well, until then, I can I can just go back to just being like, eh, when we talk about the Patriots. So uh, <laughs> another one, Jim Harbaugh is making his rounds as well. Um, he's interviewed with a couple of folks. The Chargers obviously is one that I think a lot of people have felt like it was a good fit for him because he played, uh, excuse me, he coached in California already, but it was Northern California. Um, David Shaw, which actually was the guy that took over for Jim Harbaugh at Stanford when he left to go to the NFL. 
um, was also interviewed, uh, you know, but we all know that that's a Rooney rule thing. They're not interested in him. If they could get Jim Harbaugh, I think that that's where that would go. It's not why a thing. I mean. Why did David Shaw answer that phone? And we, that's what I want to know. Like, what are you doing, David? No, you are not getting ready to play in my face. That's what you're not about to do. Never, unless he felt like he was doing a solid for his boy, if that's his boy, I don't even care about that. I'm not answering the phone unless I am a serious candidate. You are not great Rooney rule me. It was somebody else that got Rooney ruled too. You are not getting ready to rule. I'm not answering that phone. I want y'all to have some fucking di dignity out here. I'm not answering that phone. Find somebody else down the hall that could come and fulfill your obligations. And then they had the nerve to, uh, what was it, Albert Breer? Mr. Boston ain't racist himself. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Rooney rule has been satisfied. I was like, Can oh, you say that? Uh-huh. Oh, oh, okay. But you don't see how weird that is, Mr. Breer? Okay. That is very strange. Very, very. And Mr. very- Mr. Boston ain't racist. Even though people is like, what? <laughs> I'll never forget uh, him and Adam Jones literally having like an argument because somebody threw a banana peel but Adam Jones and he and he tried to really go out his way to act like that was not a racial connotation. Yes, the fuck it was. Okay, and the only way that we can move forward, only way we can move forward from racism is if we acknowledge it in the forefront and then say we have a problem. But you know, Albert Breer always going to be one of them type of people. Antonio Pierce, there has been a campaign I'm seeing on uh, social media that Raiders fans are having currently. Um, that is saying higher AP. I think the hashtag is higher AP um, for the Raiders. And I've been seeing it a lot. And uh, I don't know why they have not said, no, we're taking the interim tag off. But uh, as of right now, Antonio Pierce is still um, a free agent. He has interviewed with the Tennessee Titans. He has interviewed with Atlanta. But uh, we're waiting on the Raiders to say, we ain't going to let you go nowhere. We want you to stay here. And, and I don't know if they're trying to build up the momentum on it or build up, but you I don't think you're building nothing up. I think you're pissing your fans off. There's only one decision to make here. There's only one. There's only one thing to say. There's only one thing to do. Um, they have not interviewed anyone else, I don't think. So that is kind of saying something. I mean, because they could have, you know, they could have got Harbaugh in there and, and everything, which is what I thought the mistake that they would make is that they would do something like that. But even if I'm Jim Harbaugh, I, I would be like, I don't want to go there. They don't want me. They, they clearly want somebody else, you know, the fans and the players. So I, I don't right. think I would to do that, but they need to go ahead and, and just and just make this decision unless they're trying to make a big Splash, maybe they're trying to like announce it at the Super Bowl since it's in Vegas or something. I don't know, but go ahead and do what you need oh, to do. God. Just what? do the shit and let's move along. Like the Super Bowl is the Super Bowl. Nobody outside of Las Vegas is gonna give a fuck about that hire. Okay. So for you, if you want to wait till Super Bowl Sunday when people are watching two teams try to win a national championship, then I don't know. That's the most narcissistic thing I've ever heard, and that's stupid as hell. That's all. That's I'm the saying. only. That's the only thing uh, I, I can think of. Because, like, what else are you doing here? We've already had people announce. Let's go ahead and, and and get. We. I'm ready for our next straight up black head coach hire. Straight up, like, not yeah. no proxy. You know, not no. Oops, we let's do this. No, straight up. The best yeah. time to do it is when you're having a slow news day so then people can have a conversation about it. The worst time that it's to, to pull it. The, you know, people that want things swept under the rug do interview, uh, do press releases when something major is going on. So I, I don't know if that's going to be the case. Then you need to hire a new PR person because so, they're not yep. doing the right thing. <laughs> yeah. uh, good luck to you. Um, Amy Trask, our girl, Amy Trask, a former Raiders uh, executive, by the way. Amy Trask. She, she does a podcast. So Amy Trask talks about the divisional weekend and she talks about the remaining quarterbacks. And Amy Trask said, and I quote, we have seven terrific quarterbacks remaining and one good quarterback, end quote. And so she's talking. No, that's not what she said. She said we have seven terrific quarterbacks and we have Brock Purdy. That's what she said. And so she explains herself that she thinks that 
Brock Purdy is fine. She thinks that Brock Purdy is a very good quarterback. She also explains that Brock Purdy benefits the most by the talent that is surrounded by him. And apparently it has caused a major shit storm in social media. I saw somebody call Amy Trask a cunt and she responded to it. Uh, apparently, yeah, apparently uh, former players have had something to say about this. And so um, she's getting a lot of backlash about something that I thought that many of us felt to begin with, Chels. First of all, <clears throat> I don't play about no motherfucking Amy Trask. So I did not see that. Comment. <laughs> I can't wait to get to the social media and respond to that one. I did. That woman has forgotten more about football than some of you idiots will ever know. If there is anyone who is qualified to evaluate talent and to give her opinion on something, it is Amy fucking Trask. I saw LaShawn McCoy old milk dud head ass talking about blocked and all of that. What do you know? You don't know nothing. What does she say that was so different from what Cam Newton has said, said and everybody sucking Cam Newton balls about that? Excuse me, that was very vile. What did what is different than what she than what Cam Newton said? And then what Cam Newton, every time somebody throws an interception or somebody does something, everybody invokes Cam Newton. What's the difference? He said, he said the same thing. We already know what the difference is. You don't have to answer that. Y'all need to stop. That is the truth. He was literally Mr. Irrelevant. He has done yeah. well. He had a good NFL career, even up to this point. Miraculous NFL career. But he also has an outstanding defense. He got Debo Samuel. He got Christian McCaffrey. Yep. Like, he was set up to be extremely successful. We have yep. seen quarterbacks like Brock Purdy get Super Bowl rings. What is so wrong with, with, with what she said, other than the fact that she said it and you don't like it because you're, you're a 49ers fan or whatever, and, it's, and she's a woman? Yeah, those are the two things that are the biggest issues. But here's the thing. I, I, mean, I mean, you literally can... Look at this. All right. Texans and Ravens is the first game. C.J. Stroud, number two overall pick. Lamar Jackson, first round pick. Packers, 49ers. Jordan Love, a first round pick. Brock Purdy, Mr. Irrelevant. And by Mr. Irrelevant, me, uh, last person we, we are talking about the very last pick in the NFL draft. Buccaneers, mm -hmm. uh, Baker Mayfield, number one overall pick. Lions, Jared Goff, number one overall pick. Chiefs. Uh, Patrick Mahomes, 10th number overall pick. Uh, him. Bills, I think. Him. This, and, and him. Uh, Josh him. Allen, top 10 uh, pick. So, I mean, we're literally looking at the quarterbacks that are in the divisional round, and all of these guys are first-round draft picks. And then the motherfucker that plays for the 49ers was the last dude to come out of the NFL draft. I don't That's have a problem with what he said. When, and look, it's okay to be a game manager if you don't fuck up. Like, I don't know what we're doing here. Like, is Brock Purdy better than what people expected him to be? Yes. Okay? For him to be Mr. Yeah. Irrelevant. Sometimes that works because sometimes you have good coaches. Sometimes you have good personnel. Sometimes you have both around you that allows you to develop into something. But majority of the players – and quarterbacks in the league are system quarterbacks. I know we like to try to say that this is a bad thing. It's not a bad thing because you do need to have some type of smarts to run a system, particularly if it's a complicated one. So I don't get why this is. And, and Amy, I thought, articulated her point. She said, I think that Brock Purdy is a very good quarterback. This is not me disrespecting Brock Purdy. This is me saying that I think being with Kyle Shanahan and having the weapons around him is what makes him great. And what's wrong with that? Because I saw Jimmy Garoppolo take a similar 49ers team to the Super Bowl. The Super Bowl. Like, what, the, what the fuck was the issue? Yeah, the Super Bowl. The issue? And, and, you, and right now, we may never see Jimmy Garoppolo play again. Exactly. So, so it was like, what is it? 
about and, and and she said it and you can tell that communicating and using words in, in that way is her strong suit she knows how to say something that you might not want to hear but make it sound good but y'all are in your feelings and you're not if she said seven of these people are first round draft picks and one is not would you have had a problem with it <laughs> because that is exactly what it is that's exactly yeah. what it is um and and you know i know you know people take things that are said against when they can't be objective they think take things that are said against their quarterback as as personal as a diss as something else and and whatever and y'all got to get out of your feelings like you got to get out of your feelings um it, it, and 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 not take the course of being absolutely rude and vile to somebody like amy trask who i will keep on saying i'm ready for her to be the next commissioner anyway I'm ready for Goodell to go. I'm ready for Amy Trask to get in. I think she got, she has a better skill set. I think she knows what to do. Is she not as scared of these? These owners ain't going to punk her like they punk Roger Goodell. And I'm ready for her to do it. And y'all out here calling her a cut? What? I can't wait till I find the tweet. Can't wait till I find oh, She responded to it. And, you know, obviously a lot of people were in a position where they um, defended her. And so I told, look, you know, I don't, I, I also said, Amy, I, look, if you need me, I'm here. Cause what I don't, hey. we're we not going to do with that. Hey, hey, you ain't got to swing girl. You tag me in it. Tag me. Yeah, we snowed in Amy. We snowed in. <laughs> we ain't this cold. We snowed in. Me and Rita ain't doing nothing but watching murder TV for the rest of the day. And she going to watch it till the light, till the sun go out. Then she ain't going to watch it no more. I'm going to watch it all yeah. because I'm so. This is correct. This is correct. So we do not play about Amy Trask around hey, hey, these parts. Hey, you didn't have to verify that this is correct. You didn't have to say that. <laughs> well, everybody <laughs> tells that you like morbid shit, yo. I don't know. What? Listen, when the sun goes down, I ain't watching that shit. You <laughs> you wanted Santa Claus to kill people for Christmas. Okay, I we we saw it. It was on. We 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 talked about this on the podcast. So we know who you are, Charles. We know. Who you are. I don't work on myself. Okay. Uh, on myself. Divisional wild card. I mean, wild, a super wild card weekend happened. Uh, do you want to talk about it? Because we can move on. We don't have to. Oh, I wasn't going to talk about the Cowboys. <laughs> Oh, okay, cool. Um, well, I, I will say this because I, I know I don't want to see like I'm I'm a sore loser, even though I am a sore loser. But I don't think okay, it's okay. So you're a sore loser. Then it is. What yeah. it is. Well, I don't think it's anything to talk about. I think everybody saw what happened, and uh, it is it is what it is. And I saw it was a lot of uh, celebration from people who still had to play. Um, and uh, then they Eagles fans. Oh, oh, you gonna call them out? I'll call them out for you, Eagles fans. I think. Oh, Steelers fans too. Oh, I had, oh, oh. I, got tagged in, I got tagged in memes. I got text messages. And my, 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 imagine my surprise when I looked at the TV and seen what had, what then took and happened on Monday. So <laughs> I, I don't have anything to say. Um, I have muted so many people. I have, I've been very close to blocking some people. There's a couple of Eagles fans that I blocked, but now I wanted to unblock them so that I could say something to them. But see, I don't be bothering nobody. And that, that is what I will say is y'all, y'all, I don't bother nobody when your team lose. I don't That's text right. nobody. So why you come bothering me? I don't okay. bother nobody. I'm and I can't you. understand why people keep fucking with me. Because y'all know I ain't got no soul. And the reason why I don't respond is because I don't want you to not be my friend no more. <laughs> if I don't send for you, don't come for me. The end. That is if it. If I don't send for you, don't come for me. And, 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 and what, what, just one little, little thing. Hey. The Commanders fans are the most pathetic people I have ever encountered in my life. <laughs> I have never seen a team that is so that is so abhorrent and that has become and that losing has become their identity. It has become who they are. The expectations of the team is as long as we beat the Cowboys, we are okay. And they have not done that in several seasons. They are celebrating the loss, posting memes. Uh, talk, if my good, friend, I'm gonna call Ra Ra out. Ra Ra post a meme talking about something. Oh, when the last time the Cowboys won the Super Bowl? When the last time they won the Super Bowl? 
I mean, yeah, no, hey, 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 you gotta get rid of you putting too comfortable. You putting too much dip on hey, your chip you, now. You got too much dip on your chip. When is the last time y'all have played football with dignity? Oh, you got a lot of nerve coming for Cowboys or Eagles because Cowboys and Eagles holding the division down for a long time here. And the Giants, the Giants last year wasn't this season wasn't good for the Giants, but the Giants have at least played like they got a fucking heart. So, yeah. Commanders fans, Ooh. when I you say you ain't no heart, I mean Ooh. sit all, all. All the way down, yeah. y'all are the petri dish of in, of the NFL. Y'all are the petri dish of the NFL. Ooh, she said y'all the scum. Ooh, mm. she said you the, the doo doo on the bottom of the shoe, child. You need to be worried about yourselves. And clean your shit y'all up. Are the yellow snow of the NFL. Ooh, stay pissed on it. Oh. Mm-mm. And that is all I have to say about uh, okay. Super Wild Card Weekend. Okay, so uh, Super Wild Card Weekend, real quick. Let's just do a quick roundup. Texans beat the uh, Cleveland Browns ass. We didn't see that coming. Well, I didn't anyway. That I, I, I a beat a beat down like that. I definitely no, didn't no. See that. I was getting ready to correct myself. I did not. You thought that I they were win. winning, but I also said I was picking with my heart. Right, but. Look, you picking them to win is fine with me. I didn't see that ass whooping, okay? No, but no, thanks no, to no, Joe no, Flacco no. with two back-to-back sixes, sixes, hey, those types of things are going to typically happen for you. Um, uh, We're going to skip over. We we talked about – we let Charles talk about her Cowboys, so we're going to go over that. Uh, game of the week for me was Rams-Lions. I thought that that was uh, a really good game. Uh, Puka Nakua – can't nobody stop the young man, but I guess except um, Sean McVay, because I don't think I've seen much of him in the fourth quarter. Um, <laughs> and they just stopped running him, and then they lost. So there's that. And there's that. Uh, and Jared Goff okay. got his. I'm happy for the Detroit people, though. Detroit has been in, has been in the in the in the throes of things for a long time. I'm I'm happy for them. And I said seasons ago, I was like. Watch out for Dan Campbell. He building something over there, and it took a little while. See, this is why you stick with a new coach, right? Now you see every year you get you inch up and up and up and up, and now right, right. who they, they play Tampa Bay, so they hey. play Tampa Bay at home um, this coming weekend. Dolphins and Chiefs. Uh, the Dolphins are who we thought they were. Um, Tua is not the answer, and I like Tua a lot. I think he's a nice guy. I think he's a good quarterback. He has a ceiling, and you are not going to get anywhere with him. So Tua is scared. Tua is afraid. Tua plays like yes, somebody he is. who laid down on the field and had a seizure in the middle of a game. That's how he yes. plays. But I'm, even outside of that, he throws picks. He throws bad picks. He he, he You can kind of get him out of spot. Uh, so I agree with you that he is. he does play scared when he sees pressure in his face and he's not really, like, ready to run. Um, but also, uh, I, you know, I just don't think he got it. But Chiefs, once again, look like they back to being in playoff form. Uh, ridiculously cold out there that day. Shout out to the Chiefs um, fans that went there. Um, and I'm going to the, the There was like seven people that had to go to the hospital. Six uh-huh. or three. Or, so they had hypothermia. Hey, man. Yes. Uh, Patrick Mahomes and them don't care about y'all. Okay. Stay your ass at home. You're getting ready to be like this out there. Hey, don't freeze your digits off. It ain't cool. Don't freeze. Don't freeze your digits off. Uh Steelers at Bills. I mean, that, that game was boring for about uh, I don't know, two and a half quarters, and then they kind of caught some speed, and then the Bills, you know, just uh Man. you know imposed their will against mm-hmm. the Steelers. Um Mike. Uh, oh, excuse me, Josh Allen Allstott was out there uh, running around 50-yard touchdowns like he – yeah. I, ever since you said that, every time can't I see him, it. I can't – I can't see it. I can't like, it. Whooped my brain. <laughs> hey, that's, that's a what he big, like when he be out there running. Cornbread fed white boy, I'm going to tell you something. That man <laughs> – is a wrecking ball when he get going. As long as he don't turn that ball over, which is likely, 
will steamroll right over top of folks. My favorite thing is that it's a, it's okay for Josh Allen to do it, and we don't talk about him potentially being hurt. But when Lamar Jackson was out here running, and he wasn't even bulldozing people over, he was just running. Uh, that then, oh, he can be hurt. But I see y'all. It's cool. Uh, and last but not least, the Eagles uh, went out sad, like they had been doing the last uh, two months of the season. Uh, got beat down by the Buccaneers uh, away in Tampa, and that this is one of the saddest seasons I've seen for a team with playoff aspirations. Starting ten and one and it ending the way you did is is nasty business. That's crazy. And I, like I said, it hasn't even been fun. I don't I don't have nothing to say to uh, to like teasing. Well, I mean, Cowboys, but I I, I I think what the Eagles is. I don't know what happened. Like with the Cowboys, it is a game to game thing. So really you just holding your breath to see who's showing up and who's ready to play. I know exactly what happened on, on uh, Saturday, Sunday with the Cowboys. I have no clue what happened over the last six weeks with the Eagles and neither do their fans. And I saw multiple people, like at least three to four people say they should do a documentary on the on the Eagles collapse of this season. And I never <laughs> that way, like I never thought about it, but I was like, it is kind of an anomaly that they, like you said, start off ten and one and then lose their last six seven games, um, getting lose the NFC. Like after they started off ten and one, I stopped thinking about the Cowboys winning the division because I was like, well, are we just gonna try to get a wild card spot, you know? And then they get they get the wild card spot, and then go to Tampa Bay and let y'all got Baker Mayfield. Re <laughs> Mayfield should send an edible arrangement to the Eagles, absolutely, because y'all just got that man a lot of money. Had that man out there, him out there like Baker was slinging that, that man. Thing. Baker was like, had that man out there looking like Dan Marino. <laughs> Look like Oklahoma Baker out there. I said, "Oh, yeah." He in. He gonna catch. look like uh, Alabama Jalen out there, and I know he got a lot of injuries he's dealing with. So hopefully he can rebound after having a, a you know off season that he can rehab himself. So uh, better yeah. luck next time, I guess. I, Philly. I, I All right. Was about that part though. Yeah, about exactly. Alabama, Alabama Jalen will, will, you know. Hey. He, yeah, he'll do it for you. He, it. he will he will do it. He will do it for you. All right. Divisional round weekend. Uh, we know that there's four games this weekend. Let's and the first game up is Texans at Ravens. Let me tell you something. Uh, and, and please don't take offense to this. I'm picking the Ravens, but let me tell you why I would pick the Ravens even if I didn't pick the Ravens because y'all have been real spicy here this last week, and I am afraid <laughs> for my life. That if I pick something, if I pick against you, I mean, y'all have been jumping on everything and everybody that looked like disrespect. So listen, I, I hope things work out for y'all, but I also hope that y'all take a Xanax and bring that shit all the way down. Y'all are, so, I've never seen Ravens fans so reactive. Oh, baby, they 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 hold one this look. They tied, they tied this week. Oh, the ball's overrated. Oh, because there's a lot. Of, and ironically, it's weird. I've been seeing like a lot of Texans uh accounts like, oh, you know, y'all going down and, duh, 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 and then we're like, they're like, okay, like I mean, the Texans aren't in our division. Like, we don't think about the Texans like at all. You know what I'm saying? But, but you it's got so you funny, know. like, like it's okay. No, I'm not talking about. I'm talking about. It's not like something. Okay, it's not like. Oh, outside of the division, it's not like oh the Patriots who we hate or the Chiefs or the Bills. You know what I'm saying? Nobody hates the Texans. Like nobody hates the Texans. So they're like trying to create this hate, and we're like, okay, like, and it's just been a mess. I've muted so many words this week because I'm just uninterested in all of the drama that goes with like none of us are out there playing, dog. So. We just gotta yeah, let the things lay out. I, I just think, I mean, it is. I I usually see as a whole. I usually see the Ravens fan base way more confident than I've seen. Well, confident. Well, maybe you know, just not reacting to 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 other people and to things like that. Oh and I yeah, know, baby. This is the, the, this is the fan base that has Lamar Jackson. They've been they've been reacting since 2018. 
Like, oh, well, you know, I'm just saying, I have not seen it be like this. Like, this was like, oh, Lord, child, I'm so nervous. I'm so nervous. So, for my own safety, I will be picking the Ravens. <laughs> Look, um, I'm, I'm, marking myself, I'm marking myself safe from the Ravens flock. I know, right? Yeah, we got to make a, a, a meme, safe from the Ravens. I, uh, I, I'm picking the Ravens. I, I don't want, I, I'm not overconfident about this. I know everybody telling me I should be overconfident about this, but I think there's a little PTSD in me left. And so I got, it's one of those things I got to see in order to, you know, believe how real it is. But I do think mm -hmm. that um, the Ravens are having an advantage here. Obviously they're playing at home and um, as much as great as CJ Stroud is and Nico Collins, I just don't think that they have enough got horses. That's just where I stand with that on offense. So um, I am picking the Ravens as well to uh, advance. Packers at 49ers. This is an interesting one. I'm, you know, I, I, I look, I say it's interesting because yes, the Packers have played well in the regular season as of late. I just don't think that we thought what happened last week in terms of the differential of how that happened was going to happen. Um, but that's, I, Hey, man, Jordan Love and their offensive coordinator over there has done a fantastic job. Now you got to go to San Fran, um, who, you know, obviously is they are the number one seed, whatever, because they deserve to be there. But do you feel like the Packers have a any type of outside chance here? Let's, let me just say this about every game this weekend. Any team can be beat. Period. And so everybody has a chance. They, I think that I do think that. Well, let me just say I do think the 49ers win this game. I think that the Packers look really, really good against the Cowboys, and I think that that had a whole lot to do with the, how the Cowboys were playing. Um, the Cowboys did not play defense. Did not play the way that they should have been playing. They went to zone. You know, and, and 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 you know, for different reasons, but I think that Dan Dan Quinn got cute and everything. So I don't think it was just like the Green Bay Packers are so much better and they just went in and routed them. I said, no, I think the Cowboys got cocky and cute and lost that game. 49ers not doing that. The 49ers are gonna be way more prepared for it. I, I do expect it to be a competitive game though. Um, but I, I think that the 49ers should be fine here. I, I'm picking the 49ers as well. They're also nine and a half point favorites. I didn't know that. Um, so that's interesting. <clears throat> Buccaneers go to Detroit uh, to play. Detroit potentially can go to the NFC Championship game, honey. That's wild. If Detroit go to the NFC Championship, I want them to go all the way. That would be crazy. What? How, that, that would be crazy. That would be like a... Hey, Listen, but I, I don't know about Tampa Bay up there. I'm picking the Lions here. I don't know yeah, about Tampa, Tampa y'all, y'all cute or whatever, but uh, the Lions have been rolling. Um, and I'm going with uh, Detroit as well to head to, well, what we think might be San Francisco to go to the NFC Championship game. Good for them. Um, and then last but not least, Chiefs and Bills. I hope both of these teams beat each other up. <laughs> I would love to. I, I'm just going to be honest with you. You know, I, I find a way to just, just dog each other out, dog. Make this a knockdown drag fight, uh, which I, I think is going to be because the Bills are only favored two and a half points here. So I actually, um, I'm going to pick the Bills here. Um, I just feel, I just, I don't know. It's, it's something about how they just sped things up at the end of the season. Um, and I think they're just clicking a little bit. I'm gonna I'm gonna pick the Bills here. Um, yeah, and that feels weird. I'm, I'm not picking against Patrick Levon Mahomes until he loses uh, in the playoffs. Uh, so um, you know, now this is a different territory for him because he's he has to travel as opposed to them coming to him. So it is different. But again, I know what I know what it's I've tr I've picked against. Pat Mahomes before. I, I I'm not comfortable doing that. So he just gonna have he's just gonna have to lose, and then I'm gonna have to be like, okay, I was wrong on that, but yeah. hey, I can't pick against the dude. So uh I'm picking the Chiefs to pull out uh a win and I hope this is a real close game again. Like I want I don't want I want 
I want to be on the edge of my seat. Well, let me ask you this. Who do you want to win that game? I, I can pick. A, I, I don't know. Everybody like I, I could. Sorry. <laughs> I could yeah, make. I, a, <laughs> I put my, 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 my camera. I, I hit my laptop and my camera slid. Oh, sorry about that. It's not clearly not secure enough. Um, so I, I can make a case why one I want one team, why I want the other team's dangerous. I, I don't know. I, I've been saying Buffalo because I think Buffalo has a uh, – their defense to me um, has dealt with a lot of injuries, and they're problematic. But everybody's like, oh, but Josh Allen. And then I can say, oh, but Patrick Mahomes. <laughs> like, I don't know. Like, I mean, what are we doing here? Patrick Mahomes is a two-time MVP. I mean, Josh Allen is, is great. But Josh Allen ain't been winning no MVPs. So why so why why do y'all think I'm supposed to be like, oh my God, Josh Allen, and not say, oh my God, Patrick Mahomes? I can make a case for either one on why I don't want to see them or why I do want to see them. You know what I'm saying? So um that's why I just said I just hope they just beat each other up. You know what I mean? Just beat each other up, beat each other down. And then hopefully if the Ravens win, the person, the, the team that comes in is a little wounded. And then you can not get in the way. <laughs> Of destiny, okay. okay. Don't get in the way here of what of what That's of what fair. is supposed to be done. So, uh, all right, okay. those are our divisional pick for the playoff weekend we have coming up. And I want to remind you to book your next winner getaway with our sponsor, Expedia. Package your flight and hotel to start saving big. Plus, don't forget to sign up because members earn up to ten times more one key cash on flights when booking a package. Start saving by clicking the link in the description and booking your next trip with our Expedia promo link. So there is that. All right, college yeah. football. Not a whole lot going on, but a whole lot going on, if you know what I'm saying. So, Chell, Nick Saban has decided that he's going to go ride off in the sunset and go home and the dominoes are starting to fall, honey. How you yeah. feeling, Chell? I mean, the kids, the kids are decommitting. They want to go to, you know, other schools. Which I think they go in other places. Yeah, I it's mean, they, like, they, they the Washington dude is good. Like, what are we doing here? I, 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 that's what I'm saying. I was like, well, well, Kayla was in the national championship. Just you know, but I, 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 I'm watching it. But like, there's nothing to react about. These are, of course, you got the transfer portal. We got the NIL thing. Like. These are things that could have happened if Nick Saban didn't leave, but are happening on a greater scale with more significant players now that he isn't, even though he is still very much attached to this team. He is, I feel like he's getting ready to be one of those de facto coaches, like in the background, really running the yep. show, not have the pressure of it. Um and um and then and then I've heard from some you know some reports from some Alabama players that are like hey we're gonna stick in and we're gonna see what he's gonna do you know blah 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 but I mean the transfer portal it's gonna keep on going so it's I really you know at first I was looking at because you know now it's you know the 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 freshman quarterback uh I forgot his name uh 18 years old he he was redshirted last year he's transferring yeah. out of Bay. but right before that why a quarterback from Washington transferred in so when I saw that I was like, oh, we're getting ready to lose somebody else. So you play with who is there and you inspire and you coach up who is there. And that's all you can yep. do about it. So Nick Saban probably is the most prolific coach that college football has ever had. Even bigger than that the one who won the national championship. You're, and so it is it, it is going to be like that. Um, and the, the and the fact that he made a big imp impact on Tuscaloosa in general, versus you know, so it's it's just gonna be like that. So I'm gonna ride with him. I mean, you know, it, it, we we gonna we gonna see who who's left. People are saying, oh, Bama ain't gonna win but six games, and they ain't gonna do this. We don't know what's gonna happen. You know, you Very gotta you true. got a coach who came from the national championship coaching now. Yeah, so, that's it's, it's just crazy how you know people are like, oh, Nick Saban not doing this no more. I'm I'm rolling out, even though Nick Saban has already yeah. told y'all he's gonna be around. He's got you know he's not like leaving the program. I mean, he's just not coaching full time anymore. But he's absolutely still gonna be um, a big part of what it is that they're gonna be doing. So it's so crazy to me how y'all think that they just gonna end up being like trash or something just because uh, Nick Saban is not the coach anymore. And is it the players or is it their agents? This is very true. 
they not supposed to have agents, but you already know they be talking to people. Yeah. There, there are people that it, it is, is it the people that are advising them that are saying, you know, oh, you should, you should absolutely you know, at 110%. Yeah. 110 percent that these are people that are advising them that are telling them like oh no that's the case you know like alabama didn't earn the right to you know for you to stay there because of their reputation so it's just because crazy. of their reputation um, yeah and you may go to another team that team already got starting players yes you, know, you, you want to go, you want to go to texas to as a quarterback good luck unless you want to get on like that man with the nine nine years of eligibility <laughs> <laughs> well he got injured like in four consecutive seasons i guess which is what um so you don't want to do that uh so or you don't want to get a job go get a job well go get a job or you don't want to be like to Aaliyah, uh to his brother who thought he had an extra year eligibility and then he went into the transfer portal and they was like uh excuse me you're out brother so you need to go find you a job go go hey, find something hey, to do hey, out. Even Nick Saban wrote a letter on his behalf, and they was like, "Hey, Coach Saban, we appreciate this. Tell that man to go into the draft." <laughs> a grown man. Go the, whether it be the NFL draft or the real or the uh, military draft, hey, go, brother, go find something else to do with yourself because you can't come back here. Okay, something. Go do something. Go do something. <laughs> go do something with yourself. Okay, you can't come here. So uh, that is very interesting, and I definitely wonder how this is all going to um, play itself out, particularly because there's been conversations about trying to get um, the politicians involved with this NIL stuff. Um, and, but they are, as of right now, they're just dragging their feet about it because they don't give a shit yeah. about it as much um, as of yet. Um, and until it's something that interests them, then they will get into it. But we haven't seen that backlash yet. Yeah. All right. Volcano time. Charles, you first. Who you put into the volcano? So um, I have actually a special request. And we get requests for the volcanoes all the time. But all the time. <laughs> all the time. But this person is, this is my people right here. My fellow detective. Uh, uh, if you're not following Kelly on Twitter, at KMGZ, um, she has an outstanding podcast called Thanks for Asking. Um she and she's a, a devout listener to this podcast. She's always adding me and saying stuff or whatever. Um, but Kelly is an Eagles fan, die hard, born and raised in Philly. And she is so tired of these fans that she has requested that we put Nick Sirianni and Brian Johnson in the volcano. And I feel that I should oblige my friend. Um, y'all, okay. y'all embarrassed my home girl on Monday. Um, and, and for the last six or seven weeks, um, I, I don't know. Nick Sirianni is a, is just a, not a likable person to me. Um, he seems like an <laughs> asshole. He seemed like he don't listen to nobody. Um, I don't know too much about Brian Johnson, but it's Nick Sirianni is just very punchable to me. And I, I actually am very, I, I don't mind doing her this favor of putting him into the volcano. And so I feel like from what I'm reading, this may be on behalf of a great number of Eagles fans that they would like to see him gone from here. So uh, uh, in honor of you, KMGZ, uh, Nick Sirianni, Jump on in there. Brian Johnson, you go ahead on right on in there behind him. Dang, yeah. Eagles fans are not too happy. It's going to be interesting to see if he stays, uh, you know, for 2024. Because I don't think that it's, like, written in stone that he's staying. But as of right now, it feels like he's potentially going to stay. And he's going to change his coordinators, it seems. So, uh, Brian Johnson is a guy. Who they need to get? But get rid of Matt Patricia. Why is he in your building? <laughs> Patricia should be banned from the NFL. Why would y'all? Oh my him? god! Yeah, I, I, you definitely need to go find yourself a new defensive coordinator. Um, Brian Johnson is somebody that I'm familiar with because he was Florida's uh, offensive coordinator when they had Kyle Pitts there, which kind of which leaped Kyle Pitts into being the top 10 um, draft pick. I liked him. I actually wanted the Ravens to get him, but now I'm glad that they didn't because I'm seeing all the backlash. So the Todd yeah. Munkin choice was obviously perfect um, for what they have going on because uh, Brian Johnson ain't getting no love in Philly. Uh, so, yeah, hopefully uh, at least maybe one of Kelly's requests will be honored. 
um, yeah. in terms of somebody getting a new start. Sirianni, I think, is still up in the air, but uh, Brian Johnson has a good chance, I think, of being relieved of his duties. So we'll see how that goes. Um, I'm going to put Mother Nature in the um, volcano because, <laughs> bitch, what the fuck? Okay? I know that it's winter. Y'all going to be like, oh, it's winter time. But I thought we was in the global warming part of the, of the show. But this is not the global warming part of the show. First, you had Kansas City last week. It was out there. It was negative 27 degrees. Then you then I seen snow twice this week. I haven't seen snow in two years, or maybe longer, Charles. Might have been longer than two years the last time I seen snow. But now I get snow not once, but twice in the same week. Then for the Ravens game, you want it to be 25 degrees as the high? Like, what the fuck are we doing here? Like, yes, I know it's winter, but this is go global warming winter. Okay, where's the 40 degrees? You want your global warming weather? It's the global warming winter. Okay, I want 40 degrees when um the Ravens played in that playoff game in 2019. It was 55 degrees at eight o'clock at night. See, that's the fucking winter I'm talking about. Now I gotta fucking sit outside in 20 degree weather because you want to have a real winter. Like, when do we go back to real winters? Okay. I want to go back to global warming winters when it was 55 degrees outside. I don't want to do this. And I'm I'm annoyed, okay? So I don't like snow. I don't like ice. I don't like cold weather. And then y'all got the nerve to be trying to put us out there. I don't, like, people be like, oh, it's, you know, an advantage. I don't give a fuck about that advantage. It's shit cold. I'm not playing football. I don't believe in that advantage shit because how do the Ravens play, play when it's 17 degrees outside? And by the time y'all get going, it's going to drop to like 17 degrees. When do they play when it's 17 degrees outside? That's not no advantage. Everybody going to so be cold. I, I think when you play like, all right, if you play in, in a dome with uh, temp, like a, a, you know, a regulated temperature, I do feel like that maybe it is an advantage, right? But anytime you're outside and you play outside, I mean, outside of Florida, of course, right? Because Texas be getting bad weather. Like, we Yeah, they got an ice storm right now. That's what I'm saying. So it's not like that. It's not even like it's not like that, you know. So for them, okay, the Texans play in a dome. All right, cool. It's regulated temperature. Maybe, maybe it is something that you have to look at because when they played the Jets, um, I think a month ago or a little bit over a month ago, they played in New York. They lost. They lost, and mm. it wasn't it wasn't twenty degree cold, but it was like cold for them. You know what yeah. I'm saying? So, and the Jets are not a good football team, and we all know the Jets are not a good football team. Mm -hmm. So, uh. Maybe I'm just saying that I'm not interested in none of that shit. I'm not interested in none of the advantage shit. I don't want this weather. This is not the life that I aspire to have. And Mother Nature, you are really fucking annoying right now because I should not have seen snow twice in one calendar week. Okay, you see, I'm not. How dare we have winter in the winter? What Real winter. How dare we go back to the old days? Okay. Y'all worse than the, them, the Roe versus Wade being reversed. It's oh, like no. <laughs> we try, you trying to roll us back to 1955, Mother Nature. I'm trying to move forward, okay? I'm trying to move forward to the warm winters. Because if I'm going to be gone and you won't get me out of here, you know, because of global warming, at least be warm outside. So, okay. so uh, you know, I'm 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 measuring myself and responding because right now you're being absolutely irrational. And absolutely, I am. As, yes, I as, as my resident meteorologist, the person who I don't even look at the weather channel. I just say, "Hey, Rita, what, what what's going on here with this cold front?" You know how to she be reading the Dopplers and shit. I don't know what goddamn Dopplers is. This lady be reading the Dopplers. <laughs> She's going to say, it's going to be snowing. It's going to rain for the next 45 seconds, and then we good. And all of that kind of stuff, right? You are, you don't even sound like yourself. You know more about weather and climate, and you know that it's temperature. I don't like it. You be, I, just want, I just want people to not hear this and think that you got a thinking problem. I don't have a thinking problem. I am completely being irrational, and I'm completely... Okay being okay. biased because I have to now be outside in it. Absolutely, this is about me being outside in it. This has everything to do with me and nothing to do with mother. It does have something to do with mother nature because I really do hate the winter. I do. And I, I, we have not seen snow in a couple of years. That is true. However, uh, it would be fine if I wasn't making plans to actually be outside tomorrow. I I'm understand. annoyed. 
I fully understand. So I fuck support, you, I, I support Mother your Nature. Feelings. Fuck you, Mother Nature. And, and you could go into the fucking volcano until you learn to have some goddamn common sense around here. I would leave Mother Nature in that volcano alone before she reversed that shit on us. <laughs> Be like Mount Vesuvius over here. She said, Oh, you want to play around? You heard what happened to Pompeii? <laughs> how dare you disrespect my name? You know how when a bitch and you know when a bitch get petty, she get petty. So mm -hmm. there's that. All right, before we go, do you have any final thoughts, Chels? Um, I actually am uh I'm look well. I'm looking forward to the, to the weekend. I've, I've I've calmed down. I've got my nerves back under me. Um, um, and I, I in in opposition of you, I'm actually enjoying the snow. I'm enjoying not having to go nowhere and 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 to be in my yeah. house. I'm gonna make a really big pot of soup tonight. I'm gonna make some wings and stuff for the game. I'm gonna be warm watching the game tomorrow, friend. I'm gonna be thinking about you. Thank you. Please well, keep me in prayer. Because you are fool for going out there. 17 degrees. Well, Girl, when I got the tickets, when I got the tickets, I didn't know what the way it was before oh. the weather came up or when I I knew it was gonna be this like this. So uh yeah, I I, I uh I'm preparing myself. I got myself some thermals, some socks, some gloves. I'm gonna be okay. So I'll make it work and I'm gonna find a way to sneak my way into club level. It's gonna happen. So um you got I'll, I'll, I'll I'll figure it out. Uh, my final thought is I just want everybody to enjoy the weekend. I hope that we have a great divisional weekend. I hope that uh, for the most part, we don't see any major injuries. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, I, I hope that I can stay warm. And uh, I don't know how that's going to be possible. for three I, don't I mean, I feel like I might have to, huh? Might have to win Girl, the first one. I mean, you got to. I don't even know what. Yeah, you can get like a heated. They got heated sweatshirts and stuff, and heated shawls. Like you might have to get. Is it too late to get on Amazon? You might have to express something to yourself, cause. Mm. Yeah, I, I I might have to do something because at the end of the day, honey, I am going to be freezing my ass. I might have to be one of those bougie blacks at the game and have to bring my fur, my good fur. I out. actually support you know? that one hundred percent. Cause when I, that's, I mean, put the fur on. I mean, when the next time I'll be able to wait? <laughs> you, you, and, and that's what I'm saying. You want global warming to, you want global warming, but you got a fur coat you need to be wearing. I know. I Might have to wear it. Yeah. Might have to wear my fur coat um, because at the end of the day, I, it's all about being warm. So I got me some under thermals. I got me some socks. I got me some gloves. Might have to do my fur coat. Like Chell said, I got me a hat. So uh, with the, we, this might have to play out like that. We, we're going to find out what I decide to do. But uh, it is definitely in the uh, rotation of things that I should wear in 20 degree weather. So uh, I, I hope that uh, I huh? don't drink. Y'all don't drink to warm yourself up. That does not oh, work. I'm not, not going to do that anyway. I, I'm not that, interested. That gives you a false temperature that you fuck around and get hypothermia doing that. So yep. don't be like, exactly. oh, let me just drink so I can stay warm. Uh-uh, uh-uh. Don't, don't do it. Don't do that. So not me. I will not be doing that. I will just be too busy trying to stay warm. So uh, we want to thank you all for listening. Enjoy the divisional games this weekend, and we'll talk to you for AFC and NFC Championship weekend. See ya.